And my name is Hero Job Shaib, and this is Musings of a Shy Podcast, a Dogecoin peer to peer sharing economy show. And you are listening to, on this episode, episode 27, it's named Yolanda. Be cool. Be cool, Yolanda. On this episode, I am covering the common terms associated with the Dogecoin or cryptocurrency community. In particular, this episode, I'm going to cover the term of what is a wallet. I've covered this in detail in episode four of Don't, Ki- Don't Kick the Doge. Dogecoin. Uh, you can look in the details and listen back to that episode on the d- various wallets that exist within the cryptocurrency space. But in general, on this episode, I'm just going to cover the gist of what a wallet is. But before we get into the episode, the news. Some interesting thing is that things have been happening within the tech space. But before we get into that particular story, let's talk a little bit about the cryptocurrency space. Uh, the Yukon Exchange, which is a UK-based exchange, has, has waived the fees for trading with the, and with withdrawals. No doubt this is a result of the competition they may be experiencing with the you know, Coinbase opening up its uh, exchange and the potential Gemini exchange coming out in the New York market pretty soon. But right now, the Yukon Wave says wave fees for trading and withdrawals on their exchange. In other cryptocurrency news, another minor meltdown, Cointerra has filed for bankruptcy. Uh, Cointerra is a mining company that created the various uh, chip programs for miners. It has uh, filed for bankruptcy. It did so through the state of Texas, is under Chapter 7. It's interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, It has a lot of creditors, investors, as well as numerous complaints about their miners. So we'll see how that plays out. But Cointerra, another mining company, has uh, gone to pieces. In another cryptocurrency news, Coinfire blog uh, issued a statement in regards to their editorial policy. It's become a bit of in question about how they get their sources for their various news uh, stories, in particular in regards to the SEC filings and the whole Gaw Meyer drama. And they have reissued a statement in concerning their editorial policies and the, the links that they go to verify information before publishing their their stories. In other news, when it concerns Con Fire blog, there has been confirmation through the SEC that in fact, Gaw Miner is being investigated by the SEC and Gaw Miner itself has issued a statement that they are in fact being investigated by the SEC. And then even for some further vindication for just the website Con Fire for blog for, for being, you know, kind of vilified through the cryptocurrency space by Gaw Miner's supporters is that CoinBrief has received some information concerning and confirming that God Myers is being investigation and that this information has been leaked. So we'll see how this plays out. It's not looking good for Josh Grazer and the God Meyer, uh, companies and his other companies that he has um, attached to this whole enterprise. But we'll see how that goes. I will update you when there's new information on that. And finally, in the cryptocurrency space, uh, the Silk Road trial uh, had closing arguments on Tuesday of February 3rd and today on Wednesday, February 4th, there is, the jury is deliberating. They have the case now and so they're going to deliberate whether or not Ross Ulbricht is guilty of the charges that have been filed against him. The case is not looking very good for Ross Ulbricht. Yeah, the defense did make some headway early on, but the, you know, the federal government just piled on towards the end about the various transcripts and chats and log entries and the, the various informants that they had coming in and testifying against him. But we'll see is, is in the hands of the jury right now. And finally, in the in the, just the tech space in general, what had happened was a couple weeks ago, a drone had crashed onto the White House lawn. Uh, they did find the individual, and what happened was the individual was drunk. A drunk employee of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and basically he just kind of flew his DJI Phantom 2 drone onto wa- the White House property. As a result of this, the DJI Phantom company has issued 
a firmware update where basically there's going to be a built-in software apparatus where the entire Washington downtown D.C. area is going to be a no-fly zone. It's going to be built into the drone itself in this firmware update. Basically a 25 kilometer or 15.5 mile radius in all directions. Phantom pilots in that area will not be able to take off from or fly in this airspace. Uh, this, this story comes from Tech Dirt. And basically what it means is that if you live within that area, basically the the Washington, greater Washington, D.C. area, you will not be able to operate that particular drone. And this is something that the company has done itself. It's not something that has uh, been pushed onto them by the FAA or any government agency. It's something they've, they've done on their own. But it's just kind of scary that this is what they considered to be a solution was to do this mandatory firm update. And this is goes not just for people in the area, but for all people who operate those drones. So you will not be able to fly within the, in the greater Washington, D.C. area. We'll see how this plays out. We'll see how the customer base responds to this, whether or not they're going to go to other drone companies, uh, whether they're going to file lawsuits or anything of that nature. But as of now, uh, if you were to update through the firmware software program for the DJI Phantom 2, you would not be able to operate that particular drone within the greater Washington, D.C. area. And now for some podcast shout outs. So my podcast shout out goes to Stranger Conversations with Grant. Uh, Grant had me on his show where I talked a little bit about my um, my life and my experiences as well as my show. How uh, that show debuts, that podcast debuts February 17th. I also appeared on Ken Talk and I will have a link of when that show is going to come on. And I basically mostly talked about Dogecoin and my podcast. And then History of Bad Ideas, uh, Seven Days of Geek, uh, Green Up Gaming, uh, Dark Angels and Pretty Freaks, It's All About the Crypto, and Coin Brief. These are all great uh, podcasts that you can listen to. Very funny shows. Uh, it's All About the Crypto, which is a web show about the cryptocurrency space, and Coin Brief, which is another great uh, Bitcoin podcast show. And now for some charity shout outs. My charity shout outs go out to Doge for Books, which provided a proof of purchase of the type of items that they purchase with the, the Doge coins that they raise. Uh, they were not able to get enough funds to purchase books for all 100 kids, but what they did do is they purchased craft items so that the kids would have the ability to make, make and create art projects. There will be a link for all the charity shout outs in the show notes, but you can check out the proof of existence, you can say, of the Doge uh, for Books project. My other charity shout out goes to uh, Robots for Doge. Uh, they had a match January 31st in which they won two out of their five matches, which will enable them to move along within the first tech challenge meets. Uh, but it wasn't very successful, but they had a great time. A lot of people asked about their logo on their robot, which brought more awareness to uh, Dogecoin's existence to other people. But most importantly, it gave the opportunity for Randy as a shy to talk to people about Dogecoin and cryptocurrencies. My other shout out goes towards a little thing of a notice where a, a young man who na whose name is Bubby Everson and basically what has happened is that he you know he's not well and he just wanted you know some stickers he's suffering from and I'm gonna say it wrong a cetomalego virus and basically what he's asking and his family's asking is that if you could send and there's a dress provided within the uh, show notes if you could send a, a letter with some stickers attached to it it really would make this kid very happy so that is something that was posted within the subreddit of Dogecoin asking, hey, this is something that we could do. We can send him some Dogecoin stickers and make this kid happy. So if you have some Dogecoin stickers or on this Saturday as being part of the, you know, boosting the Doge economy for Shib Saturday, maybe you can purchase some Dogecoin stickers. And I have a link to the original post where there is a list of the various places to sell Dogecoin stickers. And you can send some stickers to this kid and make him happy. My other shout out goes to a project called H2O Worldwide. H2O Worldwide is an organization seeking to improve water uh, quality throughout the world and they accept Dogecoin as a part of their donation process. You can check out their site. Uh, it is basically a very good project uh, is seeking to basically provide clean water around the world. And that's it for charity shout outs. Now on to the episode. So the purpose of this show is just to give a brief general description of the various concepts and terms you may hear about in the cryptocurrency space. And one of those terms and concepts is wallets. Wallets are the means upon which you hold your coins in which the public key and the private key of your cryptocurrency coin is contained. Uh, the public key, for example, for the Dogecoin address you commonly use to send and receive Dogecoin and be begins with a D and is followed by the rest of the 16 alphanumeric addresses. 
the, the address. So what that means is it's a bunch of letters and numbers and the capitalization and lowercase of the letters matter when it comes to inputting your address. Uh, the private key is a 16 alphabetic address beginning with a six, the Dogecoin. In the Bitcoin realm, uh, the, the public address begins with a one. And the purpose of the wallet is to just like a your normal everyday wallet you carry around for your credit cards, debit cards and cash is that it contains your coins for your cryptocurrencies. Now, each wallet is unique in and of itself. There is various different styles of wallets. There is the hot wallet, which is your typical mobile wallet that you will download onto your phone or mobile device. Also, your social media tipping devices like the Doge tip, uh, change tip are hot wallets and what hot wallets means is that they're actively connected to the internet and more importantly a hot wallet you typically do not control your private keys and we'll get back into that in a moment cold wallets are typically a usb hard drive wallet they serve they're not connected to the internet and you can't access it very via the internet. Basically what you've done is you've downloaded your, your Bitcoins or your Dogecoins, your wallet onto a to a portable hard hard drive and it's not connected to the internet. It's, the purpose is just to contain your information. Think of it in the sense of and the banking and the banking system like a lockbox that uh, various banks have. This is your own personal lockbox and that's what a cold wallet is. A light wallet is a type of wallet where you don't download the full node to operate or use the most, and it uses the most abbreviated form of the blockchain. Your, your multi-doge, your wow doge, uh, your multi-bit are light wallets. Basically what it is, is they don't download the full full blockchain, which can be up to various gigs amount of information in order to access your your, your coins, the full public ledger. It just gives, gives the, the, the briefest and most briefest of timelines, the, the current timeline for you to access your information, because all it is with the, the public ledger is you're just adding information. You're verifying and adding information, so you don't necessarily need to have the full public ledger to operate that particular wallet. A paper wallet is you print out a piece of paper, your private key and your public key to safeguard your wallet. Uh, a multi-sig wallet is you have more than one signature in order for the coins to move. For example, Block.io now has a multi-sig wallet uh, with their site, so if your, your coins are hacked, you're protected because in order for it to be sent or signed off, you need both ends of the private key. So for example, um, if you have a multi-sig wallet, you can either have one, two, three, or four different types of keys in order for coins to be sent. This is important if you operate a business or if you want to safely secure your wallet to prevent it being hacked. Uh, this is why people use multi-signature wallets as a security measure. But with a multi-signature wallet, you have to also make sure that it is you that holds all the components of the key or you and the individuals you designate. Some multi-sig wallets still have for example, with Block.io, Block.io owns the other private key. So if something happens to Block.io, you might not be able or capable of, of transacting with uh, your coins because you only have one part of the key and you have the other part. And also with some multi-sig wallets, uh, if you only do one or two, you need both. But some require that if you have two out of the three, you can send. So you have to look in the information and determine which type of multi-sig wallet you want. A, Q a QT wallet is the full public ledger wallet. These are typically the initial wallets of any cryptocurrency, whether it be Dogecoin, Darkcoin, or Bitcoin, Litecoin, any cryptocurrency out there will have what is called a QT wallet, which is the full basic operating wallet for that particular cryptocurrency. And it downloads the full public ledger and it generates the addresses and the private key for your, your cryptocurrency. And then you have what is coming out now, which is our dark wallets. Dark wallet is a privacy feature, feature wallet where it tries to mix coin mix your, your coins. Right now there's only a, a Bitcoin version of this. Uh, there's other wallets that are, are in the similar design and basically what they are trying to do is try to mask your activity on the public ledger because everything all transactions are on the public ledger if you submit your coins either to a business your friend to your tipping wallet or from one uh, address into another is all recorded on the public ledger and it can be tracked whether or not that identity for that particular address is found what can happen is you can track all the information and you know where all the transaction goes and eventually through time and effort you could in, in fact going through the public through the public ledger identify individuals or peoples or at least identify the usage of that particular address with a consistency through social engineering 
Basically, for example, with the Ross Ulbricht case, uh, because the U.S. government knew which Bitcoin addresses he had access to, they were able to go through the public ledger and track through all the transactions and determine uh, which wallets were with whom, who had access to the Bitcoins, who was making purchases, who was receiving Bitcoins, things of that nature. So while you can be somewhat anonymous in the sense that you're not providing your public identification like your ID or social security number or anything of that nature, typical, typically associated with a credit card, debit card or a bank account, uh, you're, not com you're not fully anonymous on the Bitcoin public ledger or Dogecoin or any cryptocurrency ledgers out there except for Darkcoin and a few other coins that have built built-in anonymity systems in there. But Darkwallet Dark Wallet is a new emerging wallet system where they embedded a type of a security system where they mix and hide your your transactions so no one could particularly track you through the public ledger. They they, they mask it. So those are the different types of wallets in that, that are out there. And basically in essence, when it comes to your wallet, all it is is its primary function, much like an email system, is it contains your coins. And it's important not only to secure your coins, it's important to know how many coins you have in your system and how to operate each particular type of wallet, but finding out which wallet is best for you. But for just the general purpose of this particular term is to understand that your wallet, when you download it, this is where your coins are going to, this is where you're transmitting your coins from. You're transmitting your coins to the public address you generate, and you can generate as many public addresses as you want containing within your wallet. And each time you generate one, you also automatically receive a private key. And depending on which wallets you have, you have either complete control of that private key or you don't. And it's from there that you're able to transmit the particular cryptocurrency or receive that particular cr cr cryptocurrency that you have. And that's all it is, is, a, is a, a vessel upon which, just like a wallet, you contain your coins. So that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoy the terms in this type of new format. Just please say, you know, let me know if there's any particular questions about Dogecoin or the cryptocurrency space you think that I should be answering for you. Uh, if you would like to know more details about wallets, uh, just like I referred to in the introduction, you can go back to episode four, Don't Kick the Dogecoin. It goes into and elaborates in further detail about each of these types of wallets and which, which ones are the better wallets and which ones are the good wallets in essence or bad wallets in general. Thank you and to the moon. Thank you for listening to my show. You can find me, Hero Job Shibe, on the Twitter at Musings of a Shibe. You can find me at Google Plus as Musings of a Shibe. You can also find me on Facebook as Hero Job Shibe or Musings of a Shibe. You can also click on the show notes and look into the links and click directly onto those links. You can find me on uh, my webpage with Musings of a Shibe at uh, wordpress.com, the subreddit Musings of a Shibe podcast. You can also email me directly as Musings of a Shibe at Outlook. You can find the show and listen to the show on iTunes, Mixcloud, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Crypto Bucket, and SFXIO. You can you can also find Nerdist Podcast, me at Nerdist Podcast Coalition Group, a great podcast coalition on the Facebook. Thank you and have a great day. To the moon. Mm -hmm.